Now this is part one of my equipment series of videos covering, in this case, German armoured cars, specifically how they were used in the reconnaissance companies. I created these in order to assist in my efforts in determining what equipment was used, when and in what formations. This is a specific issue when creating equipment data charts or organisation tables for the German army in World War II. The Kraftfahrzeug or Kraftwagen, or let's make it nice and short, KFZ-13, was the first armoured reconnaissance vehicles introduced by the German army after World War I, and by 1935, 147 units of this lightly armoured vehicle had been delivered to the fleet. Initially used to fill the gap due to a lack of armoured vehicles, it was intended as a long-range reconnaissance vehicle. The unarmed version of the KFZ-13 was the KFZ-14 radio vehicle. This was equipped with a radio set instead of the machine gun. It was designed to operate in conjunction with the KFZ-13 and provided long-range radio communication capabilities, which the KFZ-13 lacked. The KFZ-13 and KFZ-14 typically formed a reconnaissance detachment made up of two KFZ-13s and one KFZ-14. The KFZ-13 would communicate back to the KFZ-14, which had a long-range radio and could communicate with higher-level headquarters. These vehicles were deployed in the invasion of Poland, the Battle of France, and initial invasions of Russia. They were retired from active service in 1941 and only used thereafter for training purposes. This pre-war picture of two KFZ-13s and one KFZ-14 provides an example of what the reconnaissance detachment was intended to look like. In this case, we have a KFZ-13 working in conjunction with a RAD-6 communication radio car. As the war progressed, the KFZ-13 armoured cars would often be mixed in with other types of armoured cars as shown here. The Sonderkraft Fahrzeug 247, or let's use the shorter SDKFZs from now on, was an armoured command car used by the German armoured forces during World War II. It was typically found in the armoured car companies up until 1943. Its primary purpose was an armoured command vehicle. The pivot-mounted machine gun shown here was removable and was often stowed when travelling. This picture had been taken well after the end of the war, but there are many World War II pictures showing the machine gun deployed. I must admit, this is one good-looking car. The SDK Z221 was the base model of this series and the first production vehicle of this light armoured car, built on a standardised chassis for military use. This vehicle was armoured on the top, protecting a crew from artillery and had superior cross-country performance to its predecessor. It was manned by a two-man crew and had four-wheel drive. Production ran from 1935 to 1940. Some SDK Z221 armoured cars were rearmed with a 2.8cm heavy anti-tank rifle in a modified turret and with upgraded armour. The 2.8cm gun was a German anti-tank weapon working on the squeeze bore principle. It was only produced in very small numbers and discontinued when the specialist ammunition could no longer be produced. It was probably deployed in very low numbers in each armoured car reconnaissance company, perhaps one per company. The final production version called the SDK of 222 armed car, was armed with a 2cm auto cannon and a machine gun. The crew was increased to three by the addition of a gunner, relieving the commander of that task. In 1938, the MG-13 was replaced by the MG-34. In 1942, the 2cm KWK-30 was replaced by the faster-firing 2cm KWK-38 of the same calibre, obviously. Production ran from 1937 to late 1943, with at least 990 vehicles being produced for the army. The initial version of the SDK of Z-222 had the same armour as the SDK of Z-221, but this was upgraded for later models to 12mm. This up-armoured vehicle remained in service until the end of the war, although production ended in 1944. The SDK of Z-223 was an armoured car with similar features to the SDK of Z-221, but with the addition of a frame antenna and a 30-watt medium-range radio set. Later versions of the vehicles were equipped with the improved 80-watt radio set. 
He was originally armed with a MG-13, but in 1938 this was changed to an MG-34. The crew was increased to three by the addition of a radio operator. Production ran from 1936 to January 1944, with at least 567 vehicles being produced for the Army. The SD Cove Z-221, or SD Cove Z-222 armoured cars, teamed up with a single SD Cove Z-223 to form a reconnaissance detachment. The SD Cove Z-221 was gradually replaced with the heavy, heavily uh, heavier armed SD Cove Z-222. This trend of increasing the armour and weapons of the armoured car was a recurring theme, with the 2.8cm armed version being the first of the heavier armed variants. But it was difficult to equip this vehicle with a heavier weapon, so for most of the war the 2cm remained the primary weapon. There were very few pictures of the SD Cove Z-223 armoured cars accompanying SD Cove Z-221s or SD Cove Z-222s that I could find. In this case we see an SD Cove Z-221 and a SD Cove Z-222 with a larger RAD-8 radio armoured car. It's also possible the vehicle on the right is actually a SD Cove Z-223. It was clear that these vehicles mixed based on the requirements of the mission and what equipment was available at that point in time. The SD Cove Z-250 Slash 9 was a reconnaissance variant of this half track with a 2cm auto cannon and a coaxial MG34 or MG42 in a low open top turret identical to that of the SD Cove Z222 armoured car. The Germans discovered that in Russia the mobility of their four wheeled armoured cars was not sufficient, so they developed a reconnaissance vehicle based on the SD Cove Z250 half track. This proved very successful and was widely used in Russia, especially during 1943 and 1944. The SD Cove Z250-8 was a support variant based on the SD Cove Z250 half-track, armed with a 7.5 howitzer and an MG34. It replaced the SD Cove Z250-10, which was armed with the 3.7cm gun, and was used as the platoon leader's support vehicle. This implied it was allocated to platoons rather than forming its own dedicated platoon, such as occurred with the SD Cove Z-233. However, I am unable to confirm if this is correct, which makes me think this was organised into six vehicle platoons under the battalion headquarters and allocated out as required. SD Cove Z-8 vehicles were in service from 1944 onwards and fought as part of German light armoured reconnaissance formations. Their guns were suitable as anti-infantry and suppression weapons when firing high explosive shells and could threaten lightly armoured vehicles at range. Their half-track bodies also allowed for good cross-country performance. The SD Cove Z-260 was an armoured communication car designed to work with signal formations. It was typically not armed and would normally be used for communication with aircraft. The SD Cove Z-261 was an armoured communication car designed to work with signal formations. It had superior cost country capabilities than the SD Cove Z-260 and was mainly used for communication with other army formations such as artillery. The SD Cove Z-231 was armed with a 2cm auto cannon and an MG-13 machine gun. It had a second driver's position in the rear so that the vehicle could be driven either forward or backward with relative ease. The SD Cove Z-231 was introduced into service in 1932 and began to be replaced in 1937 when the German army switched production to the eight-wheeled armoured cars rather than this six-wheel armoured car. Despite being replaced, they were used by reconnaissance platoons during the invasion of Poland, the Battle of France and the initial invasions of the USSR. They were withdrawn afterwards for use in internal security and training purposes. The SD Cove Z-232 carried a medium range and short range radio. This model was very distinctive because of the heavy bed spring antenna over most of the hull. This vehicle provided long range communication with headquarters and would be teamed with two SD Cove Z-231 armoured cars. Two SD Cove Z-231s and one SD Cove Z-232 armoured cars would make up the heavy reconnaissance detachment. The SD Cove Z-231 armoured cars would scout ahead and report back information to the SD Cove Z-232, which would then relay it back to headquarters. This is a pre-war photo showing 
a number of SDKOZ 231s and a single SDKOZ 232 armoured cars in some sort of parade formation. The SDK Z262 was a radio vehicle with extra long-range radio equipment and an additional radio operator. To support the additional equipment, the turret was omitted. The superstructure was raised and only a single ball-mounted machine gun was mounted. This was used in the signal formation for communication with the Air Force, Artillery and other Army formations and was only produced in very small numbers. This drawing, while titled as an SDK Z263, was probably an SDK of Z232. I was unable to find what I'm pretty certain was an accurate image of a SDK of Z263 in this case. After 1935, the exact year is unknown, Magurus converted some of its command vehicles into even more specialised cars, improving their communication abilities at the expense of their fighting abilities. The new vehicle was called KFZ-67B. The number of cars built was very small and some sources, for example the military historian David Doyle, claimed only 28 vehicles were produced, while others have an even lower claim of about 12 vehicles. The production of this six-wheel armoured car was stopped in favour of the eight-wheel armoured car. In 1937, when the new SDK of Z263 8RAD was introduced, the K of Z67B nomenclature was changed to SDK of Z263 6RAD. It was named according to its role, Armoured Radio Car or uh, Radio Observation Car. The SDK of Z231 was the standard reconnaissance variant of this series, built from 1937 to 1941. From July 1941, any need for the SDK of Z231 was fulfilled by producing a SDK of Z232 without the additional radio equipment. From September 1941, a more powerful engine was installed, providing 180 PS instead of 155 PS. From late 1940, standoff angled armour plate was mounted about 50 centimetres in front of the vehicles. This additional armour was retrofitted to older vehicles and dropped with the introduction of the strengthened armoured frontal armour in July 1942. From July 1942, the late model SDK of Z231 had its armour increased to 30mm and as a result it did not possess the standoff armoured plate in its front. The SDK of Z232 8RAD, which was produced from 1938 to 1943, was identical to the SDK of Z231. Only, the only difference was the addition of a medium range radio set and a large frame aerial. From 1942, a small star aerial replaced the frame aerial, a modification retrofitted to older models. From late 1944, 40, standoff angled armour plate was mounted about 50 centimetres in front of the vehicles. This additional armour was retrofitted to older vehicles and dropped with the introduction of the strengthened frontal armour in July 1942. From July 1942, the late model SDK of Z232 had its armour increased to 30mm and as a result the standoff armour found in the earlier models sitting at the front was not included. As both the SDK of Z231 and SDK of Z232 were armed in a similar manner, there were three of each vehicles in each reconnaissance platoons. This would allow the vehicles to pair up or mix with the light armoured cars as required. The SDK of Z231 armoured cars would scout ahead and report back information to the SDK of Z232s, which would then relay it back to the headquarters. Now this picture shows an SDK of Z231 mixed in with a six-wheel and four-wheel armoured car. This is almost certainly a pre-war photo. This shows the SDK of Z231 with the added spaced armour in its front. The original armour thickness was obviously not sufficient to defeat anti-tank rifle fire, thus the inclusion of the standoff armour. The SDK of Z263 was a eight-wheel armoured car, but with an increased height superstructure and armed with a single MG34 machine gun. It was a dedicated radio vehicle with a bedstead frame aerial mounted over the hull. This shows the SDK of Z263 with the added spaced armour in its front. As with most of these vehicles, or types of these vehicles, they were allocated to signal formations and used to communicate with other Air Force or Army formations. 
The SD Cave Set 233 was equipped with a short barrel 7.5cm howitzer and based on the open topped superstructure of the SD Cave Set 2638 Rad radio vehicle. 109 of these vehicles were built at the Bussing plant between December 1942 and October 1943. A further 10 were converted from SD Cave Set 263's chassis in October 1942. This variant of the SD KFZ series entered service during 1942 and remained in use throughout the war. The SD KFZ 233 was issued as a platoon of six vehicles in support of reconnaissance battalions in some of the Panzer and Panzer Grenadier divisions. As there were never more than 20 of these formations, some divisions lacked this level of support. It was very useful in dislodging enemy infantry in prepared positions while on reconnaissance missions. To provide more support for the reconnaissance battalions, a support platoon of six SDK Z 233 armoured cars were authorised on the 1st of December 1942. These were attached to the reconnaissance battalion headquarters. There are some sources which show three vehicle platoons being used in the Panzergrindir Division reconnaissance battalions, but this could be an error or could be just something that occurred on an ad hoc basis in the field. I lack any detailed or formal information of the equipment fielded in 1939, but many of the armoured car reconnaissance companies would have been equipped with the older KFZ-13 and KFZ-14 armoured cars. The Panzer and Light Divisions would possess two companies, one of which may have been equipped with the more modern armoured cars, and the Motorised Division possessed one armoured car company. This shows an armoured car reconnaissance company, in this case the 1st Panzer Reconnaissance Battalion, which consisted of two of these companies and a motorcycle reconnaissance company. These equipped the Panzer Divisions and the Motorised Divisions. This shows an armoured car reconnaissance company from a Panzer Division in June 1941. The number of SD KFZ 222 armoured cars have increased. This also shows an armoured car reconnaissance company from June 1941. In this case, the 53rd Panzer Reconnaissance Battalion, which was part of the 3rd Motorised Division. This consisted of one of these companies. In addition, it had one motorcycle reconnaissance company and one support company. This is an unusual organisation as the motorised divisions were supposed to follow the same organisational structure as the Panzer Divisions, but could reflect an interim structure until the SDK have said to 21 armoured cars have been fully replaced. In this organisation, there are two SDK Z 221 equipped platoons, each with six vehicles, which seems unique. The armoured reconnaissance battalions replace the motorised reconnaissance battalions in the Panzer divisions. This shows a formation dated November 1941. There are a number of changes in the battalion, but the new organisation issued at the end of 1941 replaced all the SDKZ 221s with SDKZ 222s in the armoured car companies. The radio cars were now embedded with the armoured car platoons. The company headquarters was also modified with the SDKZ 263 removed. This change applied to the Panzer divisions, with the motorised divisions retaining their motorised reconnaissance and battalion structure. In February 1942, the Armoured Reconnaissance Battalions received a half-track armed reconnaissance company. This change only applied to the Panzer Divisions. In February 1943, the Germans made a number of major changes, the main one being the conversion of the motorised divisions into Panzer Grenadier Divisions. This required upgrading all the motorised reconnaissance battalions to Armoured Reconnaissance Battalions. This resulted in the addition of a half-track reconnaissance company and assault gun platoon to the existing armoured car reconnaissance company. The new structure had a new date stamp, but I am unable to identify any difference between it and the 1942 version, so I'm not sure what the real changes were. The composition of the battalion varied a great deal between divisions, with the 21st and 15th Panzer divisions lacking any reconnaissance companies, while nine Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions were fully equipped and the remainder only possessed one company each. The SDK said 234-1 was fitted with a 2cm gun and coaxial MG34 or MG42 machine gun in a rotating six-sided open-top turret. 
This was the second version of this armoured car series to enter production, built from July 1944 to the end of the war. While equipped with the same main gun as the older SDK Z231, it possessed superior armour protection and mobility. It was also equipped with a long-range radio, allowing it to operate without a special radio armoured car. Now this picture shows a rather new SDK Z234-1 armoured car. These armoured cars changed the structure of the new armoured reconnaissance battalions which were now capable of dealing with enemy entrenched infantry, anti-tank guns and other light artillery, armoured cars and even light tanks. The SDK Z234-2 had a turret adapted from the cancelled VK-1602 Leopard mounting a 5cm long barrel gun, very similar to the weapon previously used on the later versions of the Panzer III. It weighed, weighed nearly 12 tonnes, but was still capable of 85 kilometres an hour. It was one of the most heavily armoured armoured cars available or used in the war. Uh, this is a staged photo of the SDK Z234-2. While this armoured car possessed an effective anti-tank weapon, engagement with enemy medium tanks was strictly discouraged due to its thin armour and also due to its intended role of reconnaissance. This, the armoured car would be, could be driven backwards by the radio operator in an emergency. Serial production started in December 1943 and ended in July 1944, with production switching to the SDK Z234-1 and SDK Z234-3. Many publications use the name Puma for this vehicle, but this was ne neither officially used nor was it its nickname. The SDK Z234-3, like the SDK Z233, carried the short 7.5cm howitzer in a raised open superstructure. The gun's low velocity made its armoured piercing round ineffective against most Allied tanks, but allowed the high explosive shell casing to be thinner and thus contain more explosive. The heat round for this weapon was, however, effective against vehicles especially when the later version of the heat round was introduced in 1944. In December 1944, production ended in favour of the SDK Z234-4. This is a staged photo of the SDK Z234-3. The 7.5cm main gun was effective in providing support when attacking infantry or enemy towed guns, which was its main purpose. It was organised into six vehicle platoons under headquarters command. The SDK Z234-4 mounted a 7.5cm Pac-40 anti-tank gun in an open compartment. This var variant was similar to the Marder tank destroyer series in that it was a weakly armoured, open-topped anti-tank vehicle. The SDK Z234-4 was organised into six vehicle platoons under the command of the battalion headquarters. It was a very effective tank destroyer. In, when placed in a defensive position, as it could be quickly driven away after firing. However, its main role was to provide support if attacking entrenched infantry or towed guns. The SDK Z251-23 was a reconnaissance variant intended to replace the SDK Z250-9. It was fitted with the same turret mounting as the SDK Z234-1 armoured car. The SDK Z251-23 was only built in very low numbers and was probably never made operational. The SDK Z250-9 proved more than adequate. The initial models may have been converted into anti-aircraft vehicles after it was decided to not proceed with this idea. The Panzerkampfwagen aufs Elle was a light reconnaissance tank and was the only Panzerkampfwagen II design with the overlapping, interleaving, road wheels and slack track configuration which entered serial production. With only 100 being built from September 1943 to January 1944, in addition to the conversion of four Alfs M tanks. Originally given the experimental designation VK 1303, it was later adopted under the alternate name Panzer Schwarzwagen II and given the popular name Luxch. The 9th Panzer Division had 29 of these vehicles in August 1944, which indicates the company strength was about 29, although 25 would be the official strength. While the Panzerkampfwagen II was considered as obsolete well before 1944, this version of the Panzerkampfwagen II was introduced to provide the Armoured Reconnaissance Battalion greater strength. 
to deal with the increasingly heavier armed infantry and enemy reconnaissance forces. In that, it was extremely successful and probably was one of the best light tanks produced during the war. The SDK of Z140-1 was a German reconnaissance tank with the 2cm turret from the SDK of Z222 armoured car. There were 70 built. While these vehicles were allocated to the reconnaissance battalions, they were considered as armoured reconnaissance vehicles rather than reconnaissance vehicles. These vehicles were designed to provide more punch to the reconnaissance battalion. However, its poor armour made it impossible for it to meet any enemy tanks and hope to survive. 25 were allocated to the 2nd Panzer Reconnaissance Grossdeutschland Panzer Grenadier Division on the 27th of April 1944. 25 were allocated to the 1st Panzer Reconnaissance, 3rd Battalion, 3rd Panzer Division on the 1st of September 1944. It is unknown where the remaining 20 vehicles were allocated, or at least it's unknown to me. The SDK of Z140-1 was a new breed of reconnaissance vehicles designed to give the reconnaissance forces more offensive capability against entrenched infantry, armed cars, light tanks and towed guns. It could not hope to engage enemy medium tanks, but was otherwise capable of small-scale offensive operation against reasonably heavily defended enemy positions. In 1943-1944, the Grossdeutschen Regiment was a four-battalion infantry regiment. It had its own armoured reconnaissance battalion. The battalion was comprised of a HQ unit, five recce companies, and a supply company. Number one company was an armoured reconnaissance company. Number two, number three, and number four was a reconnaissance company, and number five company was a heavy company that consisted of an assault pioneer troop, a close support troop, and a mortar troop. The SDK of Z140-1 would normally be posted in number one company, the armoured reconnaissance company. The SDK of Z140-1 nomenclature was also used for a German close support reconnaissance tank, this time armed with a 7.5cm gun mod mounted in a modified superstructure. The Aufklärungspanzer 38 mit 7.5cm, or also called the SDK of Z140-1, similar to the 2cm version, these were used in the Armoured Reconnaissance Battalions and were probably organised into six vehicle platoons under the battalion headquarters. By March 1944, the new SDK of Z234 armoured cars were being deployed in the West and Italy. This shows a reconnaissance company equipped with these vehicles. The SDK of Z140-1 were used in the Armoured Reconnaissance Company, the Grossdeutschland Panzergrenadier Division, the 3rd Panzer Division and one other division. Other vehicles which were used in these formations were the Panzerkaufwagen II with the 9th Panzer Division possessing 29 of these light tanks and a further two or three possessing a company equipped with Panzerkaufwagen II. Only six or seven from a total of about 30 Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions would possess armoured reconnaissance companies. It's, to the best of my knowledge, these are the two centimetre versions of the SDK of Z140 slash ones. This completes, concludes my video on this subject. I have no doubt I shall be updating this video in the future as I obtain new source material. I have posted some of the source material that I possess in the URL shown in this image. Denken Sie daran, Emmett Verhill, Heimatland zu Kampfen.